Shami that really every Jewish man should know about because it really is a foundational text for us to understand the theology of what we're supposed to be doing as Jews, how we're supposed to be learning Torah, how we're supposed to be thinking about Torah. It comes in Peya chapter 2, Halacha 4. And this is from Rabbi Zera. Rabbi Zera was one of the great Amarim who came from Babel over to Israel to go learn with Rabbi Yochanan, who wrote the Yerushalmi. He was a student. And he's saying in the name of Shmuel, Shmuel was one of the heads of the Babylo of the three Babylonian academies. He was one of the heads of it. And by the way, Shmuel was, the Gemara calls him a spicy pepper. He's very, very sharp in terms of mental capacity and thinking and being able to remember and understand things and explain it in a clear way. And by the way, the monetary law goes by Shmuel. In other words, when, when this Amara is explaining monetary law, his explanation, that's, that's going to be the halaha. So even if he's going up against rabbis that might be uh, bigger with bigger explanations, in terms of monetary law, it goes by Shmuel. This is who he's quoting. This is how Shmuel is understanding this. It says like this. It says that we do not derive practical halacha, not from oral laws transmitted to Moses at Sinai. Now, let me explain this. So the Mara Fulda, the great commentator in the Yerushalmi, says like this, that the, the way it works is that when you have a halaha, la Moshe la Sinai, that that's, a, a, it's explaining a one-time law. And the law, the logic of that law works exactly like this and no other way. You can't take this logic and apply it to other cases. That in Gemara learning is called a hekish, where, or binyanav, where you're, where you're using this as an example to go and to extrapolate it out to other cases. The very famous example of a binyanav is, or a hekish, is where you have in the Torah about returning lost objects. And the Torah's example is a donkey. Now, it doesn't apply every possible case of what to return. It just says a donkey. But we understand if somebody loses a wallet, you got to go find and do lost and found to return it to the rightful owner. If somebody has a backpack that they lost, right? It's not just a donkey, okay? So, so what they're saying is that if you have a very specific law, okay, that that only applies in that case, and the logic that's used there applies only in that case, and it doesn't come to other cases. We don't apply law that way, okay? So when you're looking at the Halahala Moshe Sinai in Torah learning, that's a very narrow application. It's that case. That's what Rabbi Zera is saying in the name of Shmuel. He also says, we don't learn practical halaha from Agadada. Agadada are very deep, mystical explanations of, of scripture and text. And Zohar is very famous for it. Midrash Ravah, which I highly recommend every Jew to learn every day, is an example of it. Um, it's, it's more like a mystical explanation of what's going on with this law, how to understand the law, why it's happening, how the scripture is read, the connections between scripture. But we don't learn halacha from that. And especially if it, if it contradicts uh, the, the, the Bavli or the Yerushalmi, or the Talmud, we don't, we don't learn it. But it does, it's a tool to help us understand the, the secrets of how Hashem is running the world or how Hashem built the world or the way the Torah is, is to be read. It's part of the tradition of how we read and understand Torah. And then it says we don't learn from Tosefetas. Tosefetas are a collection from a contemporary of Rabbi Meir of Balanes, who put together a collection of, of the Tanaic uh, sayings, writings, laws. It's a lot like the Mishnah, but it's not authoritative. And you can find it in the back of every Bavli. And basically, it, and it's quoted all the time in the Bavli, but if you have a disagreement between a Mishnah and a Tisefeta, you put more weight on the Mishnah, right? Mishnah is, 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 is really what we're going by. But nonetheless, 
we do care about what the Sephardists say, and it, it does it does factor in with trying to weigh it. But what's happening is when we're looking at a Mishnah, when we're looking at a Tsefeda, when we're looking at other Tanaic writings like a Baraisa, what they're doing, they're doing something very specific. They're coming and they're taking the tradition and they're, they're putting forth the tradition. And it's up to another set of rabbis after that to sort out and say, okay, well, this rabbi has this tradition from here and this rabbi has this tradition from this teacher and this is more authoritative than this one. This particularly happens and most of the time happens with laws that are Durabanan, usually with um, rulings from a Sanhedrin to explain finer points of the rulings of a Sanhedrin. That's usually where it's happening. And sometimes maybe one of the Tanayim didn't hear the ruling. And so that's why you'll put more weight on this one who, who is, is uh, going by a majority that did hear the ruling. You know, they didn't have telephones, they didn't have fax messages. And it's possible that one of the Sanhedrin rulings on something that's a rabbinic thing, maybe maybe one of the rabbis didn't hear one of the nuances about it. So they're reporting everything. They're reporting the traditions that they had. And then the job of the Amarim were also in, in the Gemara, right? Those are, those are the, the next generation after the Tanayim that are reporting the tradition. Their job is to come and sift and to explain, okay, this is what this Tana means. This is what this Tana means. This is how the tradition works for here. This is the way it's put together. And we understand how Jewish law is applied, especially with rabbinic things, right? So then this, this Gemara says, and we only derive practical halacha only from the Talmud. Now, what this is trying to say, says the Vilna Gons Rebbe. This is the Vilna Gons Rebbe. This is the Pnei Moshe. The Vilna Gon Rebbe says it like this, that Mishnahs and Baraisas and Tesefetas were not established as a tool for final halacha, but is to preserve and transmit a discussion and a tradition so that, that they got from their teachers. And in contrast, the main objective, says the Pnei Moshe of the Amarim, who is that next generation after the Tanayim, is to sort out the different views and then to establish a final halakha. So the Amoraic rulings of sitting down and learning the, the Gemaras is really, really valuable because that's, that's going to be how you actually interact in Judaism with, with what's going on. Now, some of the rulings in the Talmud might, might be unclear. And that's why you need the next set, the Rishonim, to explain like, no, 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 the halakha is like this. Because it takes those ones that are not so clear, or maybe they're cases that are close to a case in the in the Talmud, but not exactly a case, and they'll 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 they have the knowledge to come from all the Gemaras and the Shas, and to say like, no, no, in this particular case, it's going to be like this. So that's a tool that you can have as a really basic theological tool for you as a Jewish man to come. And to, and to sit and to start to understand what's going on with this fabulous, amazing text called the Talmud. It's a tool, but you have to learn how to read it. And you have to learn how to read the Mishnah. The Mishnahs are written in a very specific way that takes some education on how to do it so you can understand what's going on with it. And then the Gemaras, which is also going to take some education to learn how to do. Now, very important to join a structured learning program and to, as a Jewish man, to do Daf Yomi if you're not in a structured learning program, set a time, learn every day. But you don't just open up and learn by yourself. You want to learn the tradition. You want to learn how to learn. And you want to sit down and get the basics of how to sit down and read a page of Gemara, read how to read a Mishnah, how to understand what's happening with it, how it's, how's Halakha going to be determined, so that... Really what happens is once you start to see it, the, the rules that how we operate as Jews starts to make a lot of sense. And you can see the beauty in it and the understanding of it, and you can get appreciation. So have a great day.